Hey folks, welcome back to the shop for another episode of Skunk Work Sundays. We've got a lot to talk about this week. Talk about some new equipment in the shop, so an update on the Knight's Armament LRP gun, and we're going to show off another 6 arc gun we built this week. Well, let's get to it, starting with this new lathe behind me. So I took delivery of a new sharp lathe this week uh, sitting behind me. It is a 1640L. Uh, I'm pretty excited about it. It's going to offer a lot more capability than my old lathe. So let's take a look and I'll point out some things of why I chose it and uh, maybe some advantages over my old lathe. So here's the new lathe that was delivered this week, um, just to give you an idea of the size difference. Uh, so this lathe is a 16 by 40. Uh, so that means the you can swing apart 16 inches tall and 40 inches long. Uh, as a frame of reference, this is my old lathe over here. Um, it's been doing great for the past couple years. It does have a few limitations. Uh, so this lathe is a 13 by 36, I believe. So 13 inch part in diameter, 36 inches long. Um, as you can see, this is actually more of a bench top lathe, uh, a little bit smaller. Um, one of the main dis disadvantages of it, it does have change gears on the end of the head, yeah, the end of the headstock. Um, so if you want to do weird thread pitches, you have to open up this cover, change out some gears, and that is kind of a pain in the butt. Um, doesn't allow me to do things like metric very easily. Um, another limitation is the small spindle size. Uh, so this actually has a, I believe it's a one and five eight spindle. Um, so it does limit the types of things I can do. You can't fit a very big part into the headstock. Uh, so that was one of the main considerations. Switching to this guy, this is just a temporary spot here in the shop till I rearrange everything and get the electrician in to wire it up. Uh, this machine is about seven and a half horsepower, runs on three phase 220. Um, so fortunately I do have three phase here in the building. Um, just to give you uh, an estimate or a good uh, judge of the size difference between these two machines. Uh, this thing weighs about 3,500 pounds. The old machine weighs about 1,200. Um, I can manage to move this myself with my forklift uh, pretty easily. This thing, uh, there's no way in hell I'm even going to try and move it. So I had some equipment movers drop it off this week. For a size comparison, this is the three jaw chuck for the old lathe. Um, you can see this thing is... Fairly light, I can pick it up one hand, um, not too much trouble. Um, this is the three jaw chuck on the new lathe. Um, I think the old one's about an eight inch chuck. This is a 13 or 14. Um, another big advantage I mentioned is the spindle size. So this thing has a three inch through hole on the spindle. So that's pretty exciting. Allows me to not have to turn scar barrels uh, between centers anymore and some odd barrels like the LMT MRP. Um, I can turn those in the chuck now because there's lots of room in the spindle. The other main advantage of this thing, um, it does have a quick change transmission. Um, so if you look, there is a thread chart. So all these different letters, numbers, um, give you a different thread pitch. So for this machine, uh, we're switching to Imperial to metric threads is as simple as turning this lever, which is awesome. Adds a lot more capability to the shop. Uh, so I'm pretty excited. Like I said, I don't have it hooked up quite yet, but in the coming weeks, we will work with the electrician and get everything rearranged in the shop so we can put this thing into service. As for an update on the Knight's Armament LRP, that we were working on getting converted over to six arc. You'll notice it looks a little bit different from last week. So last time we saw it, it was in a million pieces. So this week I did manage to find a new gas tube. So we got the upper assembled. Use the 18 inch ballistic advantage barrel, an SLR gas block that I had on hand, um, just a normal rifle length gas tube. Uh, you notice one other thing that's different. I decided to dit ditch the quick change uh, chemo suppressor adapter. Uh, so I left the flash hider on the factory LRP barrel Got rid of the adapter, went to a direct thread mount. Uh, the main reason I did that was just to shorten up the overall package a little bit. Um, shot this weekend, cycles great. Uh, we'll go over some targets and how it performed a little bit later. But first I wanna go over some things with some bolts and the bolt carrier group. So one thing I quick forgot to mention about the factory LRP barrel, um, to tighten it up in the receiver itself, I did end up shimming this and using a little red Loctite to 
lock up the joint a little bit better. Uh, this seemed to help with accuracy a little bit. I did not do that in the Ballistic Advantage barrel yet, uh, but I'll probably do that here this week or in the coming weeks. Probably get out shooting again next weekend. Uh, but first, I want to talk a little bit about bolts. So we had the factory um, E3 bolt that came out of this gun. Uh, I want to talk about some differences between it and the JP bolt that I'm running. So first glance, I think I showed last week, the bolt face is obviously a different diameter. And you can see the additional webbing on the E3 bolt makes this a lot stronger. Um, Knights Armament came out and said they don't recommend using this in a six arc. Um, I'm undecided yet if I'm going to go against that suggestion and bore it out and use it anyway. Uh, I need to do a bit more research and some measuring for the extractor to see if it can work in an unmodified state. So let's talk about some of the other differences with this bolt. So if you take a look at it, you'll notice that the extractor here looks a little bit different than the standard extractor. So on the JP bolt, there is a single extractor spring, much like a normal mil spec bolt. The Knight's Armament bolt has this lobster tail looking area. And the reason for that is there are two extractor springs on the Knight's Armament bolt to help with extraction. Um, you'll also notice that the pin or pivot point for the extractor is in a slightly different location between the two. So the nice armament bolt, the pivot point is a little bit closer to the bolt face, uh, which helps aid in extraction. So one other thing that's a little bit different in this thing is the size of the cam pin hole. Oh, so I'll switch these back to the side they were on. So the nice armament, you'll notice it is slightly smaller than the normal size JP bolt. So another thing I had to switch out on these things was the cam pin. So Nice armament cam pin on the right, mill standard cam pin on the left. So you'll notice there's a, a step on this and it is ever so slightly small in diameter, so they're not interchangeable. Um, if I were to use the Knight's armament cam pin in the JP bolt, um, you'll notice it is pretty loose, wobbly. Um, I would imagine that would cause a lot of issues, potentially shear this off, break the bolt. Who knows what would happen? So this is another thing we had to switch out as well. So I want to go over a, a quick note on these cam pin holes. Uh, so a lot of times when you see bolt failure, it'll be probably one of two reasons. Uh, if you're loading particularly hot ammunition, you could shear the lugs off this. Uh, this is especially common with these large bolt face bolts because uh, there's not a lot of material around the lugs to help strengthen them. Another area for potential failure is here at the cam pin. So that's kind of the reason Nice Armament went with a smaller cam pin hole to get some more material in this area to make the bolt stronger, give it a longer service life. So one thing on these JP bolts, uh, let's see if we can see it in here. No, oh, we got flipped around the other side. So if you notice in the very, very back of the bolt, there is a slight little ledge right here. And the reason for that is to prevent the cam pin from going the whole way through the bolt. Um, and this is a little bit different than factory, or I shouldn't say factory, uh, a mil spec bolt. So to exemplify that, I dug through my parts bin, took out two bolts. Um, they're both identical, you know, nothing special about these, normal 556 five, bolt face. Um, mil spec is, is far as I can tell. So one thing on these, let's, uh, let's find the right side here. Um, so this bolt on the left is similar to the JP in that there is a very, very small step machined right into the bolt that prevents the cam pin from going the whole way through. This other bolt, I think uh, this might be a micro best, I believe. Um, that other one we just looked at. Uh, so I used to actually work for a bolt carrier group manufacturer. I used to moonlight there um, in addition to my day job before I got into this custom AR stuff that I do now. Um, so they machine the stop right into the bolt. Um, on this bolt, like I said, I believe this is a micro best, but don't quote me on that. Um, you'll see these two little divots on either side of the cam pin hole. How they actually form that, they actually stamp those in there. So they use a big press, uh, push down on this area of the bolt to displace metal. And that is actually what causes the cam pin not to go the whole way through the bolt. As you can imagine, 
Pressing on this bolt causes a lot of localized stress in this area, and that can contribute to them failing prematurely. So that's one reason Knight's Armament changed their design, and people like JP machine the stop right into the bolt so you don't have to stamp it, stamp the stops in. So another thing we didn't quite talk about last week was the difference between the barrel extension for an E3 bolt and the barrel extension for a normal bolt. Uh, this is an LMT barrel. It was just in the drawer, so I grabbed it just for demonstration purposes. Uh, but you'll notice a, a little bit of difference. So if we take a look at the Knight's Armament bolt, you'll see the, the webbing uh, is more rounded. So it reduces the potential for a stress riser or area where forces could be lo localized and cause a crack to start and propagate. Um, so this has a proprietary barrel extension unique to the Knight's Armament guns. This is a, uh, I'll say somewhat typical barrel extension. It does have slightly bigger feed ramps because uh, this is a 300 blackout barrel. Um, so shooting real large projectiles, sometimes it's good to have a slightly larger feed ramp. So as you'll notice, the teeth on this thing are a little more square um, to match the squareness of a standard style bolt. So a standard style bolt will work in this. Uh, the E3 bolt will not. One interesting thing is with the E3 barrel extension, obviously the E3 bolt will work, um, as will a normal bolt. I don't know of anyone that's actually ever run a normal bolt in an E3 barrel extension. Um, seems to fit. I would have to defer to the experts at Knight's Armament to see if there would be any long-term issues with that. So that said, let's, uh, let's take a quick look at one of the other uh, six millimeter arc guns we built this week and then we'll take a look at the test targets from this thing so here is the other six arc gun we built this week uh, it does have lewis machine and tools monolithic rail platform or mrp for short um, it is also running a ballistic advantage barrel an oss flash hider and uh, let's see it also has a jp full bolt carrier group, so their enhanced bolt carrier group and the special large face bolt to work with six arc. Um, this customer did want a superlative arms adjustable gas block and they're also running uh, E-Lander mag. I think this is maybe their shorter five or 10 round one. I'm not sure exactly. Um, we did run this thing. We shot it in the bullet trap here in the shop. We did have to adjust the gas block just a few clicks to get it to cycle fine. Uh, but other than that, I believe this is the first LMT MRP in 6ARC. So I'm pretty excited about that. We did a, our standard barrel conversion on that to allow us to use the ballistic advantage barrel in the MRP rail platform. Um, we're going to get this shipped out this coming week uh, back to the customer. I do have to do a little bit of cleanup work. Uh, the barrel got a little dirty from shooting in the barrel trap. So we'll get that cleaned up. We'll get it packed up and shipped back. I'll be excited to hear how comparable the results are from this gun to the LRP we just built. So now we'll take a look at the results from shooting the LRP this weekend uh, at the range and out at distance. So we're gonna take a look at these targets uh, from sighting in this weekend. I went to one of the local ranges uh, that fortunately has an indoor range out to 100 yards. So it was pretty easy to get the LRP on paper. Um, so you can see here in the middle, uh, I think my first couple shots were down in this area and this was at 25 yards. So just dialing in, getting it over here. Um, then this was my first group, 25 yards. Obviously that's just a ragged hole because it's so close. Uh, then again at 50. So I had to bring the sights down a little bit. Um, let's see here. Then I think this was my first target or first uh, group at 100 yards. So you can see at first I was hitting way up here. So I had to adjust my elevation down. Um, you know, I won't profess that I'm the greatest shooter in the world, uh, especially shooting indoors, pretty loud. Um, the mirage on the can was getting pretty bad by this point. So I, you know, the group was okay. Um, keep in mind, this was like the first, within the first 20 shots ever out of the gun. So still probably getting broken in. Um, fairly decent group over here. This was what, the, the second group at hundred yards. Um, you know, the, the gun shoots half decently with fact, factory loaded ammo. Um, I was getting about 
I think my average muzzle velocity was about 25, 75. So out of an 18 inch barrel, that's not too bad. Um, then right before I left, I shot two more groups. Um, I think I shot this one, you know, that's, that's not the greatest, but that's probably my fault. Cause you know, like I said, I'm don't profess to be the greatest shooter in the world. Uh, I finished the day with that group. Um, so it is tightening up a little bit. Like I said, the, the barrel's breaking in, the mirage was bad, um, just a poor shot. So I kind of chalk that up as uh, pretty decent. So after I got it on paper, I went out to my secret uh, shooting spot out, out in the mountains. Uh, we were shooting at about 9,000 feet. Um, I think I sighted it in um, here in the local Denver area at about 5,000 feet. So we had this eight inch gong at, I think it was 470 yards. So I dialed in, I think it was six and a half MOA of elevation. Um, was able to hit this guy no problem. Uh, shooting off a tripod, a uh, field tripod, and then a bipod. So I, I'd say that's fairly good. You know, like I said, this is less than probably a hundred rounds out of the gun um, at this point. So it was doing fairly well. Um, and then this gong was out at 650. You know, I obviously wasn't shooting for groups. So I was just trying to hit the damn thing. Um, you know, cool day, uh, no wind or anything. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm fairly impressed. I think for the, this 12 inch gong was at 650 yards. So I dialed in, I think it was 16 and a half MOA of elevation. I uh, was able to hit this thing no problem off a bipod. So I would consider that uh, pretty good. You know, obviously I got to work on my long range shooting game a little bit. So I'll be curious in the coming weeks as I get a little more practice, um, how much more consistently we can hit this thing. So thanks for tuning in again this week. I hope you enjoy the updates on everything 6ARC that we're working on. Um, like I said, I'm excited to get this new machine up and running here in the coming weeks. I'm not quite sure how much uh, we're going to get done this week. It is Thanksgiving week, so we're going to be uh, kind of light workload this week as we take a little bit of time off to spend with uh, immediate family. So tune in next week. Hopefully we have a few more updates. I can get a few more rounds through the 6-Arc gun this week, and we'll see where we're at.